This is going to be the story of a broken piece of junk radio, an unethical piece of junk seller, and this vehicle. This is not a tutorial video. It will not tell you how to fix the radio. It's just a story. I have other videos that talk about how to actually fix the radio. And if that's what you're looking for, take a look in the video box and it will have a link to that video. I have not had a working radio in this car in probably two years. It broke for the first time many years ago, maybe five or six years ago. And at the time I got a quote to get a new radio and it was some odd, like 600 something dollars. And I says, uh, that's kind of ridiculous. So I explored some options such as repairing it myself and was able to figure it out and repair it. And that video is in the description. That repair held for several years and then it broke again. And it broke right before I bought my house. I was just busy with other things and just it wasn't important to fix it at the time. So I let it go. And then when I moved here, the time I spent driving was probably cut in a quarter. Because now instead of going 40 something minutes to work, I was only going 10. And it would take me seven minutes to go to the store and five minutes to go to that other store and, and whatever. So it kind of reached a point where I no longer needed the radio. When I was going almost an hour sometimes to work every day, yeah, I, I wanted to have it and it would have been worth the money. But at this point, it just wasn't. Out of curiosity, I got a quote for a new radio and the price, like everything else, had gone up and it was over $800 to get a new radio, which was just an absolute no. So I just kept living with it. And then this car broke pretty good. And uh, I had to spend about $3,500 to get it fixed. And that was a that was a potentially pivotal pivotal moment because I had to decide if it was worth putting that money into this car because this car is getting kind of old and it's not worth that much money anymore. Ultimately, I decided to fix it. If that was the right decision or not, only time and finances will tell. But I fixed it. And since I fixed it, I says, well, I might as well take care of the radio because I'm going to be keeping this car for a while. So I started to explore additional options regarding the radio. I took it out of the car and I went to fix it the same way I fixed it the first time because I imagine that most likely it's the same stupid failure and it probably was but the world will never know because I was kind of rushing when I attempted to repair it and I burnt the board so there is no uh, that was it which was my fault I should have gone slowly and more carefully but I didn't so that was that now I had no radio if that was the same problem or not I don't know but I think it probably would have fixed it anyways Regardless of that, I needed to get a new radio. Wasn't going to buy the one for $800 because that's funny business. So I talked to somebody else I know who's into cars and he suggested buying a used one, which is a pretty reasonable suggestion. And he sent me one that he thought was good. And I look it over, it was moderately priced, you know, not the cheapest, but not off the deep end uh, on the other side either. And... It was on the stupid eBay, which which I have a, a disposition with, a major disposition with in recent times. So I was hesitant to buy it, especially because I know that it will probably break again. But I bought it anyways because it was just it was stupid to just have a hole here. The radio was described as working. So I bought it. It came in. I installed it into the car and it said locked. 
So I did some searching and apparently this is a common issue. Lo and behold, the radios are not transferable from vehicle to vehicle. And the alleged excuse for that is that it's some kind of an anti-theft system, which is completely useless because thieves do not steal things, generally speaking, to use for their own good. You know, it's not like a thief is going to say, oh, my car just broke. Let me find the exact make and model and steal the radio and put it in. No, they steal equipment to sell it, to make money, and then buy drugs or whatever the heck else they do. So the lock doesn't stop it from getting stolen or resold. It just stops the unsuspecting end user from being able to use it. And there's no way that this is common knowledge because I had no idea it was like that. The other guy who's much more into cars than I am didn't know it was like that. And nobody seems to know it was like that. So this is just stupid. So I was a little upset with this seller because in my mind, a working product is one that you buy and use and it works. I bought this and used it and it didn't work. This stupid listing had a mile long description on it. It was so long that I actually copied it into a word processing program and did a search for the words locked. And sure enough, in point six font, in a color that was not even accessible, there was a clause stating that the radio was probably locked and not able to be used. And that kind of enraged me because that is an extremely unethical sale because the radio was described in such a way that it would coerce someone to buy it thinking that it's going to be usable when in reality it's not the heck was that oh boy what is going on within this guy right now i don't know what that is anyways so the auction was set up to make a sale convincing the the buyer that it works when in reality, the seller knew full well that it wasn't going to work and protected him or her unethical self by typing some minuscule font that nobody reads. And now I got screwed out of the radio. Can't send it back because no returns. As far as I'm concerned, that's a scam. Oh, well, thanks to eBay and their wonderful policies that protect nothing but the seller, he or she got away with it. And now I'm stuck with this radio. I think I spent about $150 on this radio. I don't like to waste $150. So at this point, my option was throw $150 in the trash, go on a wild goose chase of calling Chrysler, whoever the heck it is that makes this thing, and try to get that unlock code, which from what I read on multiple forums, is like a 50-50 shot of actually getting someone who will produce that information. Or I buy a second one and double the price to $300, but at least end up with a working product. But then in reality, option number three, well, hold on. Option number three came into mind because I was going to search specifically for an unlocked radio, right? Because I would buy another one if and only if it specifically said it was unlock. So I go on the computer and I search unlocked radio and there is not a single one, which I don't understand because apparently the information is out there, how to, how to decrypt it or whatever. What I did find was a listing for $10 that talk about getting a code to unlock the radio. It was super flaky, a total shot in the dark, but I could spend $10 more and potentially get a working product or throw away $150. That was pretty much the only options at that point. So I decided to, or I, I could have called. That was the third option I could have called. Didn't want to do that because we know it's going to break again. This, this unit is 
is defective. The radio is, has got a defective design. There are probably millions of failed units out there. And I really think that there should be a class action suit against the manufacturer of this radio because they should have honored a repair because of how widespread the issue is. But there isn't. And there probably never will because now it's so-called obsolete, even though there's still millions of cars on the road with this stupid radio, and it's probably broken. So I spent the $10. That seemed to me the, the smallest loss because it's a losing investment no matter what you do because you know it's going to break again. I spent the $10, and sure as the sun comes up, he sent me a code, I type it in, and it worked. And it unlocked the radio. I couldn't believe it. So, an additional $10, the scam listing radio is now working. So now, we can go ahead and put this radio back into the car and have a functional unit again for some amount of time, probably not very long. Um, I don't know how long it'll work for. It could work for weeks, it could work for days, it could break tomorrow, it could be broken already, I don't know. Um, well, let's put this stupid thing in here. So, I haven't done this in a while, but I believe uh, this just kind of comes off here. Yeah, this comes off of here. And that's like that. I can't see, so you certainly can't see. There is a bolt here, which needs to come off. This is a disaster. A, uh, a 930 seconds seems to be working. <laughs> Okay, so we got that one there. There's another one over here. And then there is another one. Uh, I think it's under here somewhere. This is what I used to use, the way I used to hear music in the car if I needed to. I would plug this in because the it was only the the transmitter that broke, or the receiver rather. The walks input still works, so I used to have a Walkman that I would plug in here so I could listen to the phone. Which that worked, but it was just really stupid. Um, there's another screw under here, I believe. What the heck? That's a stinking acorn. There is acorns everywhere around here. Yeah, there's a screw up in here. Well, there's a screw up somewhere else, but we won't talk about that anymore. Okay, so that should release most of this panel, I believe. And then we just uh, we have uh, I think there's something in here we gotta take out. Yeah, there's one screw in here. And this is showing you how many times I've done this. This is pathetic. I've been in here 
probably at least six times since I've owned this car. Most people do this zero times. Disconnect this. Okay. And now what we're gonna look for is this whole piece to just kind of come off and start on the uh breaking stuff here. I'm going to start right here. We'll just kind of pull this off. I don't know how many more times I'll be able to successfully do this before something breaks because this is starting to get a little brittle, you know, as it ages because this, this car was not garaged for the majority of its life, so it sat in the sun every day. And Heat is starting to get to the inside of it. Okay, so that's what we needed to do. And we need to do all that to be able to properly slide in the radio such that we don't have to have it, uh, you know, all cockamine like that hanging out. One of the screw is missing. Oh well. I think that uh, three screw is plenty enough to keep it in place. I've been hanging there with zero screws for quite a while. Missing two screws. Unless that is easily locatable, which it did not sound like it will be. Nah, I got no flipping clue where that is. Oh well. Oh, here it is. Got it. And it all stuck. Okay, so now we can reconnect the radio. I certainly hope that all the uh, stations did not get disappeared. I'm pretty sure those are in uh, volatile memory, which is so stupid. Of course, there's an abysmal amount of slack to actually plug this in. But that wasn't too bad. And then this just kind of slipped in here like this. There we go. Now I better check it before we go any further to make sure that it's working. Because for all I know it's broken already and we've gone through all this trash for nothing. Okay, it's working. It might stop working tomorrow. Who knows? Now we'll screw this piece of junk back in. Let's get rid of it. I gotta clean out this car.
Okay, now we can put this, this thingy back on. Sounds like most of the clips are still there. So it's got, got the, it's got that going for it at least. Yeah, that looks about correct. My camera is almost out of film. Or no, it's out of battery, not film. It's got plenty of film left. Alright, well in case I don't get to this uh all the rest of this on video, let's just check it one more time. Oh, I hate that stupid beeping. Okay. Yep, it's working. Shut up! That's another thing that needs to be fixed. We'll get to that on another video. Alright, so we just have two... Uh, two more screws to put back. And then we'll be done here. Now if the video cuts off before I finished, well, the camera ran out of charge. And quite frankly, this is not exciting enough to... To go get a new battery. At least we know that it worked and the problem is resolved for now. I highly doubt it'll be a long term answer, but oh well. I mean, the best I could do for now. <laughs>